Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my webinar. I noticed that there's about 35 people on the webinar this morning. And uh, right now, you should be looking at my constant contact screen and me talking. And I have a feeling that the audio and video will probably be different for different people. <clears throat> and so we'll just go ahead and plug away and uh, get started. So my name is Albert Kaufman, and I am a constant contact authorized local expert. I'm here in uh, Portland, Oregon, and I have been teaching how to use the tools of email marketing and social media for uh, quite a while now, and hopefully I can share some of my wisdom with you today. Um, I've got a special offer going. If um, you do decide that you'd like to sign up for Constant Contact today and you use my affiliate link, um, I will go ahead and get you a email website template match. And what that means is that if you use Constant Contact, um, a template will be created that will have the look and feel of your email of your website so constant contact will go out and copy over the look and feel of your website and turn it into an email template and what that does is make sure that your branding is consistent across your email as well as your uh, website so i'm just going to have a quick look and see um, so far, I'm getting a little feedback that the video and audio is a little bit out of sync, but hopefully that problem is not happening too much because there isn't too much video happening. So welcome aboard, new folks. I see that we've got about 45 people on here. And I was just explaining to the people who have been here for a bit um, a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today, which is um, getting started with email marketing. And I've been working on <clears throat> my own email marketing for, I guess, about six years, although I've been somebody who's um, been interested in sharing what I think probably since I was a teen. I started out making newsletters with um, mimeograph machines. Some of you might remember those, the kind of smelly, inky uh, mimeograph machines where you turn and turn and turn, and each time you turned, you got another copy. It was the early version of making copies of things. And so I think my first newsletter was coming out in the early 70s. And ever since, I've, I've been really fascinated and interested in sharing my thinking with uh, folks via that method. So I want to welcome you today to a more modern version of that. Obviously, uh, email marketing is quite a lot more effective um, in many ways than uh, handing people pieces of paper. But um, <clears throat> both of them have a joy to them. I, I enjoy making my email newsletter today just about as much as I did uh, making the one that I uh, created back in the 70s. So I'm going to talk to you today about how to use Constant Contact, how to do email marketing, and how to um, get the word out to the people who matter to you most, You know, your customers, perhaps it's your friends, um, perhaps it's future customers, perhaps it's future friends. Um, in my case, I've got a wide variety of different lists of uh, people that I uh, send information out to, and so each of those kind of gets a different treatment. So welcome aboard. We still have a few more people joining, so I'm going to kind of slowly get this started. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, so in addition to the webinar today that I'm offering, um, Constant Contact offers a lot of free classes here in the area all over the country. So if you are ever in the mood to learn more about how this system works, more about social media, more about paying attention to mobile, um, uh, mobile friendly templates and just, you know, the mobile world in general, um, learning how to do event marketing, you can get onto the Constant Contact website and look up seminars in your area. And being at an in-person seminar has some nice advantages to it. 
Um, one, you get to meet in person the person who's presenting, obviously, but they often tend to be very great places to do networking as well. I've been offering classes in the Portland area for the last six months, and I've met some incredible people. And I've also helped some people meet each other. And obviously, that's the role of a networking event. But the way that networking happens at these um, presentations is really like something I haven't seen. I mean, I think it's partly. Um, I'll pat myself on the back here, um, something that I bring to it, but also I think that when people are together and learning a common topic and are facing similar challenges and then have a chance to talk to each other, it leads for a very vibrant uh, experience. So I will uh, go ahead and say hi in person and see how that goes. All right, so I'm hoping that you're getting a chance to see me. Welcome to my home. And uh, I'm talking to you from Portland, Oregon. I just had a lucky chance this morning to go out and get myself a cup of coffee at our local stump town, which is just a block from me. It's actually the original stump town. And so I'm happy. All right. So let's, uh, without further ado, we've got about 60 people here. Um, and it's been very interesting to me. I've been thinking um, for the last couple of days that I'm, Though I may be speaking to 60 people, I'm actually speaking to you. So I am sort of have the mindset of you and I are taking a little journey right now. There may be a couple of you gathered around a computer somewhere, but mostly it's you and me, and I'm going to be teaching you for the next hour and some minutes um, how to use constant contact and some of the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. All right, so let's get started. Once you've signed into your constant contact account, there's a couple of things that I think are worth doing before we even get started with um, how to create an email or deal with your lists or things like that. So when you sign into your Constant Contact account, the first area that I think is very important to look at is this area called Sign Up Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> and the Sign Up Tool area talks to you about a few different things. There's an area here that talks about best ways to use these tools. This is an area where you can go to create a Facebook sign-up form. A Facebook sign-up form, I can show you what that looks like. So a Facebook sign-up form is basically a Facebook speak for this little join my list button here. And why that's important is that anywhere that you can have the chance to have people sign up for your list is probably a good thing. This is one of my fan pages. And if I click on join my list, hopefully I will be taken to a place where a person can enter their email address and they can put in their first name and their last name, and then they can join my email list. So that is a great little um, tool that everyone can use to create a place where a person can sign up for your email list. Another place, <clears throat> another piece is this um, creating a sign up form. I'll just briefly walk you through that. Um, this is a little wizard that allows you to create a sign up form and then down below select the list that you'd like the people to sign up for. Um, what that eventually leads to is a form that looks like this. Many of you have probably seen these. I'm recommending to people nowadays that you just have the only required field be an email address. Um, you can ask for more information if you like, if it's important for you to get down the zip code so that you can do some segmented targeting of your emails, then so be it. But most people want to have the least amount of um, information possible that they have to fill in. And so I like to suggest that we make it easy for them. And the way this all plays out is on my website. Whoops. <laughs> Those are my website statistics. On my website, you can see that I've got a nice little con constant contact uh, email sign up list form. And basically, I've got two places where a person can sign up for a list here. But on different websites, I've got different sign up forms for different lists that I'm running. 
All right, so that's the sign up form. And I could run you through this little wizard. Basically, you just want to make it very straightforward, you know, just a simple title, a simple description. And then on the next field, you get a chance to figure out which lists you'd like to have the person sign up for. Well, we're about 10 minutes into the webinar. I'm just going to have a quick look and see how you all are doing. All right. And I see we've had. Uh, OK. And also a question. Um, where's our coffee? Very nice, Sid. Um, Sid, you know exactly where your coffee is. OK. So um, the questions that come in, unfortunately, I don't have an assistant with me today. So I'm not going to be able to keep super close attention to the uh, questions. But what I do think I'll do is go through them and answer them. And I will report back to you in an email back to everyone who has registered for the webinar. So I hope that will suffice. Um, I wish there was a way for you know me to answer the questions along the way. Maybe one thing that I can do is towards the end of the webinar, go through and, um, and answer some of these questions. So one question I see here that I can answer right away, it says, nice promo offer for viewers. Um, and how much is the email marketing? So um, the email marketing offer, there's uh, pricing for constant contact. You can go onto their website and see what the pricing is. Usually it's about $15 for the first 500 contacts, and then it goes up from there. So you can have a look at, uh, if you just plug in the, the URL that I showed before, and go ahead and put price, uh, forward slash pricing at the end of that, you'll see what the pricing is for constant contact. And there's no special pricing today for signing up, but the web match uh, email template offer is available. So I recommend signing up for that. It's a $100 offer. All right. Sorry for flipping back and forth so much, but um, I'm doing my best. It's my first webinar. All right. So I was showing you a little bit about the sign up form. Uh, we talked, these were the. Uh, these are the, the lists that a person would choose. And then I click on continue. And these are the different required fields that a person would choose. And then after that, you can choose the logo that you want to put in there to personalize it. And then you could also choose different font colors and background colors. Right now, I'm not going to pick either of those. Um, but it's a pretty simple thing to upload your um, logo there and pick various colors. And then you would have a very nice little sign up form. Um, and you could use the code for that for your website, for your blog. You can also just use a text version of it to send to people and say, hey, sign up for my email newsletter. I recommend that people have it just about everywhere you can imagine. It can go on the bottom of your email tagline. Um, it can go, you know, just pretty much everywhere. Okay, some other some other tools that are worth knowing about. There's a second one here called text to sign up. And what that means is that a person can come in and they can text your cell phone. Um, actually, they're not texting your cell phone. They're texting constant contacts servers. And then they receive back a reply um, asking for the contact's email address. Then the contact replies with an email address and it's saved to your chosen contact list. And so that's just a really brilliant, simple thing for um, anyone to, to set up. And I'll go ahead and turn it on for this list. And then I'm going to come back in here to sign up tool. So that's just something really good to know about. It takes just a few minutes to set up. And then what I recommend is that people have a sign at their, um, at their event. And they can use that to um, sign people up for their for their lists. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like. We'll have a little show and tell. This might be getting a little too fancy. We'll see. But I like the show and tell aspect of this since we do have video. All right, let's see. I'm sharing my webcam. Okay. So here is what backwards probably that might look like um, if you were going to um, create it in the end. And I often put these, um, I often put these, uh, geez, 
Okay. I often put these uh, signs at the entranceway to my presentations. Um, even if I'm not the main presenter, I might still have a table, and that's a great thing to have out with any other collateral you have, and perhaps you'll have a few people sign up for your newsletter that way. So some more of the sign-up tools are a QR code sign-up, and many of you are probably familiar with the QR code. That's the quick response code. You're probably seeing them everywhere. Um, right now, if you click, if you scan this QR code, you would end up in my demo account um, list. I don't think that makes much sense, but um, that's just some, that just shows you how simple it is to set up a QR code for the ability to scan to join your email list. So that's exactly how that works. A person would come over, they would scan the QR code, and then they would get a response that would ask them to um, put in their email address and boom, they are on your list. So, and one other place that I'll talk about that I think is important to set up and that is your welcome email. So if a person was going to sign up for your newsletter, this is the area that you wanna come in and do some customization. Um, you know, it's an area where you can say, thank you for joining my list. There's a place for you to put in a um, an image right here. So what this is, is that if I sign up for your email list right away, an email will come back to me saying, Hey, thank you so much for signing up. You know, here's how often my email newsletter is going to come to you. And here's a little bit of the kind of information that I might share. And if you want further information about me, here's how to contact me. You know, maybe there's an offer that you're giving right off the bat. You know, you're doing some kind of discount on your consultation services or you have a two for one running right now, you know, whatever it is. Um, and perhaps the people are all signing up via an event that you're all at together. So these are various kinds of things that you can customize. OK. Oh, thank you, Sid. Sid gave me some feedback that it was not backwards. All right. So. Next up, I want to sort of dive into, let's see, anything more I want to say about the welcome email? Well, the welcome email, okay, so I, why do I think it's so important? It is the first email that you are going to be sending to your clients. So whoever signs up for this, that's the first thing that they're going to hear back from you. So a lot of people leave this whole thing blank. They just leave the default text in there and you know, turn it on and just hope for the best. And I highly recommend not doing that because again, this is the first touch that a person is having when they come in and they sign up for your newsletter. So um, do take a little time, put in a good image and you know, you can also customize the background and make it look fantastic. You can pick the colors that, you know, match the, your website. You can customize this just like you would any template. So do take, you know, it's worth taking 10, 20, uh, half an hour to really dial this in and get it right and then test it. Make sure that when you send it out, it's um, really looking the way you want it to. All right, I've got Jeremy saying, I love QR codes. Well, all right, Jeremy, that's awesome. Okay, so. I'm going to come back in here to, okay, and so by the way, for those of you who are just arriving, um, we've had about 10 people join just in the last couple of minutes. Welcome to the webinar today. I've spent the first 10 minutes or so going into an area called Sign Up Tools, and I'll just backtrack for two seconds so that you can see where we went, and this is the area of Sign Up Tools. These top three were the ones that I mostly took a look at, and then also the welcome email letter. All right, so, and we're going to be talking about getting started with email marketing, and I'm your host, Albert Kaufman, and I'll be coming back in and out of sharing my countenance with you, but for now, I'm just mostly going to be uh, taking us for a tour of how to get started with uh, Constant Contact. All right, so. Here we are in the home area. The first thing that many people are gonna to need to do 
is coming in into the contacts area. Now, <clears throat> contacts can be all sorts of different people. You could have your friends, you can have your family, you can have people who have signed up for your newsletter via trade show um, with your permission. The whole idea though is that you've got the permission of people who are going to be on your on your list. And so you really want to think hard and clearly when you're getting started with email marketing about who is going to be on what list. So once you've kind of put some thought into that and you've gone through your address book and you figured, okay, well, my family, they want to hear from me, so I'm going to add them. You can come into this area and you can create um, a new list for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new list and I'm going to call that family. And I'm going to add the list. And so now for anything that you do, this list will show up as a possible place for someone to join into. Um, so there's various forms that we talked about uh, a few minutes ago. The list family will show up, as well as these two other lists that I've created. So once you've got your list created, the next thing you might do is to add contacts to it. So I'm going to go up here to add contacts. Now, you can add an individual contact. That's often what I do when I make a connection with somebody and I got their business card and they say, please add me to your list. I might go in and add a contact. So that's very simple to do. We'll just call this person Joe um, contact. And I'll add their email address, joe at example.com. And I do have permission to send, so I'll make sure that's checked. And here I'll click, and that will allow me to pick the email list that I want to add him to. Turns out Joe's my father. Who knew? So there I have Joe. He's on my email list family. And let's say um, I'm also, my dad's left handed, so I'm going to add him to, I'm going to create a tag called left handed. And and if you want to add a note to this contact, this is the place to really, you know, dial in any information that you want for future reference. So you might want to add his phone number or other information. So right now I'm going to click on save and we're going to add Joe. And now it's giving me the opportunity to add a new email if I wanted to do this one at a time. But for most of us, we'll probably be adding lists of people. So under the add contacts area, I can add it, contacts in various ways. I can add names and emails, and then I can also add from a file. I can also add from Google if I want to, or other apps. So let's say I wanted to add from a file. The way that works is I've just clicked on add from a file. I click on choose file, and then I go out and I look in you know, for my file. So here's a list of, of contacts. Um, I would click on open the contacts and then I would click on continue. And since these are actual email addresses, I'm not going to go through and actually um, add them all. But as you can see here, perhaps there is only one line and it's all email addresses. So I'm going to click email address. It shows some of the email addresses. And then if I click on continue, it would add all of those email addresses. Well, actually, if I click on continue, then it asks me. Do I have permission to email these people? I do. Which email list do I want to put these people in? Family. And then if I click apply, it shows that I'm adding these to the list family. And since this is a group of people who I was sending email to on Cyber Monday, I would maybe tag it with the name Cyber Monday. If I click on import, all of these people will be imported. I'm not going to bother with that because that's not really appropriate in this moment. So I'm going to cancel. But that is the process for um, adding a list of people into Constant Contact. Now, once you've got that list in there, then you can also continue to uh, sort of massage the list, you know, add tags to different people, create sublists. Um, the list uh, area is just getting stronger and stronger with time. So 
it's uh, it's an area that I highly recommend people spend some time in and get comfortable with and learn how to use because you can create the most beautiful email um, in the world. Uh, but if your list, you know, let's say it only has one person on it, unless that person is buying a Learjet from you, um, you're you need to work on the list aspect of things. So actually, that's mostly what we've talked about so far um, is the list building. I'm just going to have a quick little scan. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, yes, you can sort the tagged areas. But as I said earlier, um, I'm going to try to answer the questions um, in a written format. That should be valuable to everybody. So I hope that um, my email back to you about today's webinar will get a lot of uh, open rates because um, I hope that you'll enjoy the answers to the questions that I give. Um, also, for I haven't mentioned it before, but I am recording the webinar today. So I will do my best to get a link up of the webinar um, for those who would like to view it. So, all right, I'm going to continue on. And we've talked a little bit about the contacts area. Now let's actually go, let me just think for two seconds if there's anything more I want to say about contacts. Once you have contacts in here and you've sent um, emails out to people, you'll then see um, what their experience has been. So for instance, if I open up a contact, you'll see over here on the right-hand side that this contact has been sent an email and then the second email was not delivered to um, that contact. So you can see what their behavior has been, whether or not they've opened your email um, and that type of thing. Unfortunately, from here, you can't see whether they've forwarded the email or any other engagement that they've had, but you can see that they've received the email. So you can get an idea when you come in and you look at a contact, what how much engagement they have. If you've sent them 10 emails and they've never opened any of them, then you can get an idea that they're either not interested or need to be um, you know, recontacted. So that is pretty much the area um, for contacts. I think I'll move on into um, the email section. So I could probably spend the whole time with you just in this area alone. There's often a lot of questions about, you know, how to create an email, um, when to send an email, and, and formatting emails and that type of thing. But I'm going to take you on a little journey um, where we'll create an email, we'll pick out a template, and I'll also work a little bit with some of the um, more uh, advanced areas of constant contact so that you can, you know, either for, for many of you, um, some of these things will be uh, simple, and for some of you, they will be over your head, but you know, somewhere in the middle, uh, at least people will know what some of the possibilities are. So when I look at this view, I can see what has already happened. I'm going to come back to this area in a minute, but you can see what your open rate is, and then you have some other possibilities of things you can do. One thing that many people will probably be doing is creating a template and then um, using the copy feature to copy that template over. Um, to start a new email. So that is a little bit about how that works. Um, but to get to that point, we have to create an email. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. And then the first thing that happens is that, um, well, first of all, you should notice whenever you see one of these underlined blue areas, it says, check out this tutorial about uh, picking a good template. Now, Constant Contact is fantastic at training. Um, whether it's training you in person or training you on the web, um, there's just really nothing like having all of these tutorials at your fingertips. So I do encourage you when you do run into a tutorial to check it out. They're usually pretty helpful. Um, so once you've come into this area, you can pick a template in a lot of different ways. You can just look at the ones that show up in, your, in front of you uh, as the new featured ones, or you can go into um, looking at ones by different layouts. So for instance, this layout is just called horizontal blocks, and it's a one, uh, one column template. As you can see here, there are a variety of different templates that you can choose. So 
um, a couple of the ones that I am um, a big fan of. If I go into the type area, one of my favorites is cards. If you, a lot of times we have something that we want to get out there and we only have 15 minutes to send it. Um, you know, it's a special that's happening. Um, it's a change of a venue for an event. Um, whatever it is, you just have a few minutes to um, get the word out about something important. I'll often pick a card. Um, if I go in and I look at this card, for instance, you can see some of the um, aspects of it. You know, it's, it's very short. Um, it's only got two block areas to work with. And, um, you know, it would just be very simple to go in and customize that. In fact, you could, one um, strategy might be to make a card that's got all of your custom formatting um, and it's got all your branding and then to be able to use that and draw on it as kind of a backup for your newsletter. So again, in types, another type that I think is very important to keep track of is mobile friendly. Now, um, everyone is realizing more and more that um, people are looking at their, your newsletters on their phones. It's just a fact of life. Um, as much as we'd like to think, or I'd like to think that you're looking at my brilliant writing on you know, at least a 15 inch screen, if not a 30 inch screen, um, that's just not the case. Um, these days, somewhere around 50% of people are looking at their email and everything else on their phones. So constant contact is, um, you know, going into the fray with a number of different offerings right now. I believe there are, uh, well, at least there's quite a bit of, um, choices here in the mobile area. And I'm sure that's just going to continue to roll out to higher and higher numbers. So if I pick a um, mobile friendly template, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I will pick this one. Well, let's pick this one. It's got a little bit more color to it. So again, I'll go in and preview it just to have a quick look and see what I'm what I'm being offered. So here you can see I've got an area to put some content an image, um, a heading, a subheading, and you know, sort of a, a filling out of the bottom. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pick that template. Um, actually, before I do, just want to show you just you know there there are um, hundreds of templates to choose from. So there isn't one of these, but um, you know you can come in and find some really really beautiful um, creative work here. So for instance, here's one called Dance. And I'll just show that to you. Um, if you haven't had a chance to look at some of the templates, it, it makes some sense to go in and, and sort of surf around and see what some of the different ones are and, and what their you know values are. One of the um, one of my clients is a local theater, and they use something that looks like this, which a, which has a black background and white text. And so you can see that there's quite a lot of different choices, and I'm sure. If you've been receiving email newsletters for a while, you've probably seen things that look something similar to this. Um, this is one of the newer ones, and it's real beautiful. You know, it's got a real nice big crisp picture at the top, um, lots of nice imagery in the middle, and um, just beautiful colors all throughout. In fact, I think I would like to uh, use this one. Um, yeah, why not? Let's switch gears. We'll choose this. This is also a one column template, so it works probably work really great on mobile. So now I've chosen a template. Um, the first thing that I'll do is I'll come into this little area and I'll just say, you know, class demo. Oh, let's call it webinar. Webinar demo 127 and 14. I hit return and that saves it. This is only this is for my information only, and that will help me as I sort through the different templates that uh, that I'm working with. So next up, um, let's just look around a little bit. These uh, colors and fonts over here on the left-hand side affect the look and feel of this area. So for instance, if I change the, uh, well, any, anything I change here will be adjusted within the um, template. So you can play with that to your heart's content and you know get things looking exactly the way that you want them to. You can also use custom 
colors within here, which is a nice thing. Um, so for instance, you might want to grab your hex code from your website um, or from any other collateral that you're using and adjust accordingly. So maybe the blue you're looking for is more, you know, that color. So, so once you have figured out your various colors, um, if you want to adjust font sizes, you can do that here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and click on restore defaults. And the next area that's important, I would say, is coming into your header. So the header options, I'll just do that again. Anytime you want to open any of the blocks in your constant contact newsletter, you just basically click on the block and it will open. So here's where you um, create your subject line. So I'm going to call it super fantastic um, deal of the day. So, you know, one of the things that I talk about a lot in my presentations that I've learned along the way, and it seems to be common email practice, is make sure that the words that you use in your subject line, that you've thought them through somewhat, that, you know, they're exciting, that they encourage a person to open the email, and um, that you will be, you know, sending something that, that uh, both expresses what's within, but also, you know, tempts, teases, tantalizes. Um, and excites. So super fantastic deal of the day. That might not do it for you. Lately, one of the things I've been doing is actually just getting really personal. Um, one of my email lists is my friends and family. And the last time I wrote to everyone, I just said, hi from Albert. And I had the highest open rates that I've had ever. So, you know, this is an area that seems um, really simple. And yet I think it's worth um, doing some reading on what makes great subject lines? You know, do some go out and do a search. Subject lines, you know, that uh, that work, things like that, and think uh, hard about what you put in the subject line because um, people usually spend about two seconds looking at the first two words of your subject line, and that is how they decide whether or not to spend you know two more seconds with you. So really take a little bit of time with that. And um, I'm sure it will pay off. And you can experiment too. You know, you can create a subject line that's, um, you know, that goes one direction with one list and another direction with another list and see what the various open rates are and, you know, learn from that. The from name should be something that your, your, the people on your list recognize. So I'll put my name. Um, the from email address, again, that's um, going to show up and should also be hopefully something that people recognize. Um, here, this is uh, checked by default, probably makes most sense, unless you have somebody um, answering the emails for you. Um, I, I recommend just leaving it the way it is. But if again, if you have somebody else who you'd like the email to be responded to, um, if someone writes back just by hitting return, then you would put in um, a different email address and you would do that by um, verifying that email address. A permission reminder is an opportunity for you to remind people why they're getting their your email and um, to remind them that they can also um, unsubscribe below if if you uh, if they'd like to. So that's up to you whether or not you'd like to have that there. Um, a web page version, this is a super important little piece of um, code. So when you click that, it basically, I'll, I'll show you in a moment how that renders, but it basically creates a little web page link here that a person can then click and then a browser will open and they'll see your newsletter in a browser. This is useful for a couple of reasons. Um, one, in case for some reason they can't see it in their email client and they wanna see a bigger version, or this is also this web page link the, the URL of that link is the archived version of your newsletter and can also be used to share the newsletter um, in social media or via email or however. Um, and also, finally, social share links. These, this is a share bar that will be attached to the top of your email. And then if a person receives the email, they can click on this and then share your newsletter, like your newsletter on Facebook, and do a variety of things. This opens up a little window once it's clicked on that um, 
I think probably has about 500 different um, ways that you can share a newsletter. So I'm going to click OK. And I think I'm going to take a moment just to see if there's anything special that's popped up in Commentlandia. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. OK, someone asked why you only have nine card options. I think just be a little patient on that one. That's probably on the mobile templates. And um, I'm sure there's going to be a flood of those coming out. So nine is plenty to start with, by the way. You just need one. All right. OK, so someone just asked, what is a good open rate? And I think the answer to that one is, um, you know, in, in the industry, I think people talk about uh, 20 percent is fantastic and above is 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 golden um, I think that really depends though if your click through rate and you know if people are responding to your emails and taking actions you know if you get five people who come through and do the thing that you're hoping they did that's probably fantastic too but I'll talk more about that in my answers back to you um, so it's about 40 minutes into the webinar too and I had wanted to do a little stretching both myself and for yourself. So let's take a moment and just you know get up out of your chair, maybe stretch your arms out a little bit. Actually, you know what I'd like to do? Something very, what's the word? Unconventional. I'm gonna share with you an exercise that I do that a um, friend of mine taught me. So I will bring my webcam back. Let's see, hopefully that's working. Hopefully you can see me. Somebody please comment and say that you can see me because at the moment I'm not seeing me. Let's see. All right, well, I'll just trust that you are. Anyway, um, this is a great stretch if you are sitting in a chair for a long time and you want to kind of give your, your neck a little bit of exercise. So I take my hands and I put them on the front of my head and I keep my neck uh, straight up and down and I push really hard just to the point where my neck is vibrating for about five seconds and then I let go slowly for five seconds. Then I do the same thing where I put my hand behind, hands behind my neck, pull forward for about five seconds until I'm shaking, and then let go for five seconds. So it's like a grab and release. Then I take my right hand and put it up against my ear, and I push the same way. Five seconds, and then release for five seconds. The left hand, five seconds. And then the front part of my head, I push for five seconds and then release and then the left hand side of my head all right so i usually do that about every 15 minutes and i have a little timer that i've set up that goes off and i was thinking about having it go off today but i think that would have been a little bit too um, interrupting so back to the webinar hope you enjoyed that break and uh yeah if you need to get up and stretch um anytime you're you're welcome to. So I'm back to creating my email. And um, and by the way, for anyone who came in late, we are basically at the area of being in the email area and creating an email. Um, we've done a little bit of effort on sign up tools and also looked at the um, contacts area. So, all right. Thanks, everybody, for your confirmation that you can see me. That was great. Okay. All right. So here we are again um, with the email that I've chosen. Uh, we've just talked about the header area. We've just done that. And then let's say I'm going to come down here. Um, one of the first things that's probably important is just dealing with these various blocks. Um, Here's a picture of a guitar. If I click on that, I'm going to get a little pull down area. Now I'm in this block and, I, and the block is active. Um, I can also do things like affect text size or, or align this, but I'm going to deal with images right off the bat. So I'm going to click on change. And what that does is it opens up the image um, in a little uh, special window. And there's a lot of different things that I can do from this point. Um, I can pick a different image. So let's pick this guitarist instead. Um, I can make this image a clickable link to something. 
So let's say I'll make it a clickable link to my website. Um, I can create a caption, click on the picture for uh, special report. And for myself, I can just call this guitarist. I, I generally leave this block this box box blank. So the alignment for the image can be however you want to set it. You can change the dimensions of the image right here, or you can also use the slider bar, which will keep the image um, constrained um, and the proportions correct. So let's say I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to insert it back into the email. And now you can see I've got this image with this caption and those little lines don't show up there. So I can also take this image and let's say well, I really want to start my email. Um, sorry, I really want to start my email with this image. So I'm going to go over here to this little grab box and I'm going to move it up. Any of these blocks can be moved around. So, um, and also if I click on blocks, let's say I want um, more of something, I can always add an extra block. You know, if I really love this block, the top bar block, and I really want to have three of them for some reason, I can add them via this blocks area over here on the left. All right, so I'm going to click on a different block. and Let's just do a few things. Here I can say, okay, Harp Jensen. Actually, I want that to be a link to a website. So I'll highlight the area, click on the link button. And uh, I don't like the way that that's going to look. So I'm going to change the, the view of it. And here I might put in a website. And so when I insert that back in, now this Harp Jensen link is, is a link to a website. Um, there's a few other kinds of links that one could have as well. Um, let's say, you know, contact me. So I'm going to turn contact me into an email link. Again, clicking on links. And then up here, instead of having a website, I will choose an email. And here I'll put my email, gmail.com. And I'll go ahead and insert that. So now this little contact me is a link. And a picture can be turned into a link. Um, text can be turned into a link, etc. cetera. Um, other things that you can do from this point are, let's say you want to change the font color. You know, um, you want to center things. Um, you can fill in the background from here if you want to as well. Um, and another thing that, you know, a lot of people, I think, have a difficulty um, both with constant contact, but just in general on the web when you're creating websites in uh, formatting things. So like, let's say I have a picture here and I want the picture to be on the left, but I want the text to be on the right. Constant contact has just recently added this little feature, which is fantastic, where I can have a table. So let's say I make a four by a two by two table. I might choose to have the contact me information here over on the left. Uh, that's not exactly what I was looking for, but um, let's just say that was the contact information. Um, that just happened to be what was in my um, information there a second ago. So let's see, contact me. And over here, I want to have a picture. So I'm going to add a picture. And I'll picture picture of me with the goat. And then if I go ahead and save that, you can see the beautiful way that this is formatted, that no one can tell that there's a table there. And, you know, it's very easy to come in and, you know, move things around. I could have this be here. I could move, you know, have another picture down here. I could have four pictures throughout this area, you know, and uh, really sort of get fancy with it. Here's a little um, sign. It says, roses are red, so is pork. Something, something, bacon. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea there that um, the formatting difficulties that a lot of people have can often be dealt with via using tables. Um, and so thank you for the, the table option. This is a, a huge improvement. And let's say um, I decide, okay, I 
have been messing around with this block and I actually don't really like it, I'll just go ahead and delete it. And um, so that's a little bit about working with blocks and working with colors and fonts we dealt with. Um, down here, I've got my little stay in touch area. Um, I would recommend, you know, um, these days it's probably not a bad idea to have um, your social uh, links even more prominently than that. So you might have, um, you might go ahead and add in a link uh, to something social, you know, earlier on in your email. If you wanted to do that, once you're within a block, over here on the left hand side, you'll see that you have insert images and social. So on the insert side, you've got typical things like images, a link to a document, create an actual link, a video link. I could throw in a YouTube here if I wanted to, um, and a few more payment options and forward to a friend. Actually, a forward to a friend um, link is probably not a bad idea. So let's put one of those in there. And we'll go ahead and insert it. So, but let's say, you know, I'm also really interested in people getting in touch with me via social media. So I'll go in here to the social area and, um, you know, let's say my, my big thing is find me on Yelp. So I would go in here and throw in, um, you know, Albert Ideation. And then maybe I like this one the best. Um, you can also make a series of these. So the, as you may have noticed, each of these has um, a icon uh, or a button that's similarly sized. So there is a second one, for instance. So many times what people will do is make a block that's got a number of different social, um, social links. And therefore, if a person wanted to get in touch with you, you might pick all the same size and then they could figure out which one of these, you know, appeals to them and come and find you. So that's a little bit about um, the various ways that uh, the constant contact um, email creation part works. I'm going to uh, right after you've gone through this and you've made it the way you want to, you definitely want to click on preview. And then what I would recommend is you go ahead and send it to yourself. So I'll click on send a test. And what I do with clients a lot of times is I'll send this to them and I'll put in here a personal note that says, you know, here's a draft and let me know if there's any changes you want to make. So and up here you can see how everything has played out. Um, you can see what the thing looks like without images. Um, so that's a great um, bit of feedback as well, you know, without images, will a person actually learn anything from receiving your email or is it all images? And also you want to make sure that you have text in the background for any images that, that you're not showing. So there we have it. Um, that's what the preview looks like. You get the preview back, maybe look at it on a couple of different browsers, um, look at it if you use Outlook um, or any other uh, email clients, you might look at it there as well. You might look at it on your phone. Um, or an iPad and see how it comes out. Generally, more and more, the emails are showing up looking just great on phones. But I recommend that um, you go ahead and try that out. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a test taste of where we're going to. I'm going to continue on just into the scheduling area and show you something called Simple Share. And then I think we'll take some time and I will show you some Facebook tips and tricks and LinkedIn tips and tricks. So I hope you'll stick around for uh, the continuation of the webinar. I'm having a good time. Um, it's quite a lot of you out there. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Uh, let me just see if anyone said anything uh, in important. OK. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Greg uh, from Phoenix um, mentioned that he loves the table function. Um, Greg's actually one of my new um, uh, clients and friends and uh, works at a place called the Urban Farm that he started down in Phoenix. If you get a chance, check out uh, the Urban Farm. His newsletter is also fantastic. I'm learning a lot just from watching what he's doing. Um, and someone, Emily, is asking about the social buttons, and I bet I don't really see the whole question. So I'm just going to move on to um, here we are. We've got the email set up, and it's time to uh, schedule it. So let's continue on. 
Um, this brings us up into the scheduling area. Um, here you can see uh, a thumbnail of what your email looks like. You can see the subject line again. Um, here we can pick the lists that we're going to be sending to. I'm going to send it to um, my family. And I want to make sure that these things are correct. All that looks good. Now, before I go ahead and schedule the email, right down here is one of the more powerful features of um, Constant Contact, really. It's called Simple Share. If I click on Simple Share, what this does is it allows me to add different social media to my um, outreach for my newsletter. So I need to do this. Let's see here. So I'm going to pick um, a couple of my fan pages. And then I'm going to wait. And now you can see I've just added a second ago two of my fan pages, Ideation and Email Marketing Guru. I've decided once I send this email, I want to also post out to these two um, fan pages um, that that the newsletter has come out with a link to it. There can also be, um, as you can see from the adding area, um, Twitter accounts and LinkedIn accounts can also be added here. So for me, I've got about 30 fan pages that I are either mine or that I manage for clients. And so when I do the social share, it actually takes me about 10 minutes to click through and create sort of individualized um, commentary for each one. So for instance, I'll just do this one. I'm going to come into my Albert Ideation um, fan page and it's going to say super fantastic deal of the day. Um, down here I might say, um, you know, uh, make sure to get yours. And here I might pick an image. This image can be, um, for some reason it's not wanting to do that. Okay. Let's see. But right here, I instead of using thumbnail, I can add an image from the email that's being sent out or pick something completely different. And right now, that doesn't seem to be rendering, but generally that renders just fine. And so if I click on save and close, um, when I send this email out, um, this will be posted further to my fan pages. As you can see here, it says two pending messages. And so once I go on in this little wizard and click on schedule, um, once the email goes out to the world, then it will also be reposted on those fan pages, Twitter accounts, and LinkedIn pages. So I'm going to go ahead and say send later. I can pick a date in the future. You know, let's say I'm going to be in Hawaii on Wednesday. I can figure, okay, that's the day I want it to go out. And I want it to go out at six o'clock. Um, 6.05 Eastern Time. Um, I can archive the email afterwards, and I can also click on including Google Analytics if I want to and call this, you know, whatever I'd like to call it. And so then later on I can learn, um, okay, that's the, you know, let's see, what am I missing? Please send a time. Okay. So later on I can go back through and look th at the Google Analytics and see how the webinar um, email did. So. I've gone ahead and clicked on schedule, and now Constant Contact is telling me my email is scheduled um, for when, and I can just click on I'm done, or if I want to, I can come back in here and you know do a little bit more um, sharing on social, um, or perhaps I want to go in and unschedule it and do some more reviewing. So that's it. Well, we've spent an hour on Constant Contact, and um, I hope that that's been really useful to you. Uh, I just want to reiterate um, something about that, that if you are interested today in signing up for Constant Contact and you use my affiliate link, I can get you a free match um, with your website and an email template. And that usually costs about $100. And that would just be free included in your account. So. The benefit of that is that your email will then go out looking spiffy, a lot like your newsletter. I mean, I'm sorry, a lot like your website. And um, I think it's just a fantastic thing. Like if you look at the Urban Farms newsletter and you look at their website, there is a synchronicity there that's just really beautiful. 
Um, that's the same thing that I've been trying to do with uh, another friend's uh, work, um, the Alberta Rose Theater. Uh, their newsletter, you know, has a lot to do with their website. And then when people see either one, they're reminded of the other. So I think that's been helping them out. So that's an offer that I am making for you. And um, I think, let's see, is there anything more I'd like to say about Constant Contact? Well, um, I'll just also mention that there are a couple other products within Constant Contact that are useful. Uh, the Social Campaigns product is uh, the ability to um, basically create a campaign on your fan page um, that allows people to come in and do a contest you know, uh, receive a, um, okay, I see what's happening here. Give me a second. <clears throat> so, let's see here. The, so right here is I'm using the social campaigns uh, product. And basically I'm making an offer, the website match offer of all things. And so when this person comes in and likes my fan page, they come to a page to a different page that's um, the sort of follow up page for having liked my page via this process, and that's also a way to um, bring people to your, um, you know, that's a way for to to gather people's email addresses who are interested in your um, business. It's also a way to run a sweepstakes um, to to uh, provide downloadable content or some kind of coupon. So that's and then you can also sign up for a trial of that if that interests you um, via the same link that I shared before, and um, give that a try. There are a couple of a uh, couple more great products. Event Spot. Everybody that's on this webinar today, you actually um, had to use my registration process using Event Spot to bring you here. And so the landing page that you went to and the area that you signed in with your contact information was all um, was all gathered and well, it was created on my end. And then you ended up, um, you know, filling out your information via that. Um, and it's a great way to organize events. In fact, I'm just getting more and more enamored with um, the bells and whistles that are on that and also just the simplicity. So also the emails that I sent to you to remind you to register for the webinar via go to webinar came via, you know, my ability to respond to all of the uh, participants who signed up for the webinar. So that's definitely something to check out as well. Um, and if, if event uh, marketing is your thing, then go ahead and try signing up for a trial of event spot. Um, there's a couple of more products. I'm not going to talk about those right now, but um, definitely worth le learning about. So I wanted to spend some time on um, some tips and tricks on Facebook. So here we are in Facebook. Um, actually, first, I think even more interesting is something that uh, I just think is fascinating. Um, well, okay, I will. No, I am going to switch. Sometimes my mind goes to places, and I think it's important to to follow it. So here I am in LinkedIn. I'm going to start with LinkedIn. Now, um, hopefully, this is a, one of the things that um, you come away with today that that can be valuable. Um, in LinkedIn, you uh, it's it's pretty much the last social network. Uh, or the only social network that I know of right now where you actually have access to the email um, information for the people who you are connected with, um, though they have not made that all that uh, easy to find. So I'm going to show you where that is. And I'm not suggesting that you do anything particular with that information, but I do think it's worth downloading um, because it's a great thing to be able to contact people and LinkedIn allows you to download all of the contact information for your however many contacts. So I'm gonna show you where that lives. All right, so under network, if you click on contacts, you come to a screen that has a little gear over here on the right. So if I click on that gear, it says settings. I'm gonna click on that. And then that brings you to a little box here called Export LinkedIn Con Connections. And that's all. Um, one of the things that I am a big fan of is sort of figuring out how to bring 
the various um, people who you have in your life into the various places that you want to invite them into, almost like you're throwing a party and you want to make sure everybody gets an invitation to it. So LinkedIn makes it really easy to download your LinkedIn connections. Um, I can imagine you might be able to think of things to do with those. Um, one thing that I've done is just, it's great. I have people's email addresses. I know what industry they're in and I can just write to them directly and not necessarily use LinkedIn's messaging system, which is a little bit clunky. Um, where I can find, you know, the 10 people who I want to write to about a particular topic. Like, you know, I know these folks are interested in email marketing, so I'm going to email them and say, hey, I'm doing a webinar today. Um, so that's just something that's interesting to know. Also, from here, you can also do things like bring in your Gmail contacts into LinkedIn. And the way I don't really see very many people writing about this, but I, it's interesting to me that you have various buckets of people in various places. You know, you have your Facebook friends and you have your Facebook fans and you have your LinkedIn contacts and you have your email contacts. So what's the relationship between those? And this is something I talk a lot more about in my in my classes, um, how to bring various groups of people into various places, what's okay to do. You know, it's not okay to take these contacts and upload them into Constant Contact. If you emailed out to 4,000 people who you'd gotten the connections from via LinkedIn, um, you would have so many spam reports that Constant Contact would come back and say, sorry, you know, that's, you can't do that. And I mean, they wouldn't know what you did, but they, that's just, that is not recommended. That's not where I'm going here. All right. So, all right. I have, uh, there's many questions here and I, like I said, I will definitely get back to them uh, in writing very soon. So I'm going to go switch over to um, Facebook now. Um, maybe just if anyone missed that, I'll do that one more time because it's a little bit of a magic trick to find this. But basically under network, contacts, and then you'll see this little gear item and then you can go to download your LinkedIn contacts. All right. So here are a couple of um, fun things that you may or may not know about Facebook. So I am going to take a link. I'm going to take my website link. Let's say recently I wrote an article called Your Constant Contact Rep. And uh, I'm glad if anyone wants to read that. It's on my blog, albertideation.com. So I'm going to grab that uh, link, and I'm going to go to my fan page. And I'm going to put the link into my status update. Okay, so we're all familiar with doing that. Now, what you may not know is once you have put information into the status bar, you can then remove it. This does a number of different things. This frees up your status bar to say something about the link that you've shared, but it also doesn't clutter up everybody's newsfeed with the URL of the item that you're sharing, which I think is both great Facebook netiquette as well as you know, just kind of a kindness, or maybe those are the same thing. So now I'm going to say um, some information about this. Um, I'd love to work with you and help you get the most out of, and for many of you, this will be typical. Um, making a link in something is you put the and percent of the at sign, and then you start typing, and anything that you have ever touched in uh, in uh, Facebook it can become a link um, within your uh, posting on Facebook. Anything that you have ever, um, any event that you've ever gone to, any person you've ever friended, um, any fan page that you have uh, connected with, any group, all those names can be used. Now, when you're posting on a fan page, you, only, you can't put personal names in generally. But when you're posting, posting as your personal profile, all of those other things can become links. So I'd love to work with you and help you get the most out of constant contact. Please read up below to find out more. So now I've you know added a little bit of information here. I can also come in and if there are more than one picture, I can choose a different picture. I happen to know that this is probably going to render um, nicely when uh, when it's actually posted. It may or may not. 
but I can just leave my picture if I want to. I can also upload a picture if I want to choose something different. Um, but I can also edit these two areas. So let's say I want to, you know, let's talk, you know, why not let's talk today? Um, I could change this completely. I could talk about, you know, the East Coast being pummeled with snow if I wanted to. Um, if I don't like the content here, I can also edit that as well. Um, I'm going to just change this. I'm going to edit it right here. I offer my services to you. And okay. So now there's a couple more things that one can do. I can also click here um, and um, figure out when I want to post this. I've decided actually, you know, I think I, oh, it's 11.11. Never mind. I'm going to go ahead and post it. Oh boy, that's a 1111 for those of you who don't know is a big uh, moment for me. But, and it is 1111. So let's take a moment and just let me breathe. Have a little sip of coffee. Hmm. Yeah, if you don't get my newsletter, it's called the 11. And um, I was born on the 11th. And I have a number of other reasons why I love 1111. And the numbers 1111 for many people also are a portal towards something greater in life. And so many people make a wish. A lot of people tend to notice on their digital watches or their um, clocks the time of 1111. And it's really been um, a big part of my last couple of years. I, I have a bunch of friends that have a camp at Burning Man called 1111, and they've created this giant steel sculpture out of the number. Well, it's 11.12, so we'll get back to it. But um, yeah, if you're not a part of my newsletter, uh, The 11, I would love for you to join up and you can keep track of the more esoteric side of my life, which I think is kind of interesting. Anyway, back to scheduling a post. Um, it's not 11.11 anymore, so we can move on. Um, so let's say I want to send it at uh, 1.11. So 1 o'clock PM, PST, great. I'm going to go ahead and click Schedule. If I want to, I can also say where I was. I'm in Portland. Um, I can, but I can actually use this for um, you know a little bit more promotion if I want to. So I'm I'm actually here at my house, email marketing guru, and I'm going to go ahead and click schedule that. So that will get posted um, at 111, and now. Another little piece of uh, information that you may or may not know is um, here I am on my main uh, fan page, which is called Albert Ideation. If you haven't uh, liked my page, I would love for you to come in and like it. Um, basically, it's facebook.com Albert Ideation. And, you know, for those of you who work with fan pages, um, one place that you can find quite a lot of good content um, is coming in here to most recent, seeing who is posting interesting things and finding some interesting content to uh, reshare. So let's say I happen to be interested in solar energy um, industry. I'm gonna go ahead and click on share and uh, I'm going to say something about it. And a lot of times you can also come in here and edit the information as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click share photo. So the interesting thing there is that um, a lot of times people are stuck. You know, we're sitting at our homepage of our fan page and we're thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to say? You know, once again, I have come to a place where I have to figure out what to say, what to say, what to say. So instead, you can also find um, interesting content in the news feed of your fan page. Now, the way to fill up your newsfeed for your fan page is to go out and find, let's see, how about I'll go to Wileyware. So this is um, a friend of mine has a, some beautiful glassware that she makes. It's called Wileyware. In fact, I think this could be a moment to, uh, well, we'll just leave it with the fan page. Anyway, so I've already liked the, the fan page Wileyware, but once I have gone out um, and maybe I've liked a couple of, uh, of the things that she is into. Um, so Rogers Global Photography and Bullseye Glass. Um, then the items from those fan pages will then end up showing up on my uh, fan page as well in time when those people post. 
So that's a little bit about how that works. Um, I wanted to show you also um, something interesting about Facebook. I'm going to go to my personal profile, and then I'm going to click on the, the um, Facebook icon on the top left. Now here I am looking at the newsfeed view. Um, most of you probably know that um, Facebook tends to show you top stories. I have to, you, it just makes sense to me to keep going in and changing it to most recent. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you is that on the left hand side here, you have your fan pages listed. I've got a couple of them up in my favorites area. You can move these around. If, I, if Wileyware is going to be one of my favorites, I can click on it and move it up into this area. And I can move some of these down if I wanted to. So if I click on a fan page from my personal profile, then if I look at build audience, you'll notice that I get the opportunity to invite friends. If I travel to my fan page, via the gear on the top right and I click on build audience, notice that inviting my friends is no longer an option. So one of the easiest ways um, to uh, get, you know, to build your numbers of your fan page and to also bring the people who, you know, are probably most interested in uh, working with you or knowing, um, you know, who you are and, and what you're about is to ask your friends to join. So here I am, I've, I've gone the way that I showed you the first time, build audience, and I'm gonna click on invite friends. And here I am looking at all of my friends and most of the people in here, you know, have already liked my fan page. And if there's anyone less that hasn't of all of my friends, I'm gonna go ahead and click on invite them. Um, and this is gonna, you know, for some of you, this might be a little bit time consuming. This might take a few minutes. Um, because maybe you have 500 friends or a thousand friends, but you know your friends are probably some of the people who are most likely to um, want to like your fan page. You know, um, so that is something to know about. Um, another thing that I think is really key is knowing about this little guy. There's a little I here. It's called um, invite all. Now. Facebook has done its very best to figure out how to um, not make it possible to invite people to things en masse. But actually, um, there are still many ways to do this. I highly recommend learning which, depending on which browser you have, you'll have an opportunity to um, either uh, add an extension or a plugin. They have different names. Now, the only way right now that I know of to invite people to all of something is to invite them to an event. So I'm going to go out to an event and surprise, surprise, I'm going to go to the event that's happening right now. And I have a feeling, sadly, some people are probably going to be like, oh, can't get there. OK, so here is my event that uh, is happening right at the moment. And if I click invite friends to this event, you will see that I have invited many people already, and you'll see this little select all button at the bottom. And the way that this particular one works, it's with the Chrome browser. And now I'm not gonna actually go through this because the webinar is just about over, but I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list of friends. Now I have 2,600 friends, so it takes a little while. Um, and then I would click select all, and you could watch Facebook work its way down through the whole list. Actually, I don't know if it's Facebook or if it's the code for this little plugin. But anyway, it's a very, very important thing to know about that this is possible because let's say, you know, one way to tell people about your fan page would be to create an event and to say, you know, my event is like my fan page. You know, my event is like my movie on this contest. My event is, you know, sign this petition. An event does not have to be um, you know, a party or, or, or something like that. It doesn't have to be an actual physical, um, physically located thing. It could be asking people to do an action. So um, I think that's important to know about the invite friends piece. And that's something that I wanted to show you. Um, another thing that I think is important. So let's say we are in 
our fan page once again. And under the Build Audience area, there is an opportunity to invite email contacts. So from here, let me, let me slow down there. I have a feeling that that might have been a little too quick. What I wanted to show you is the, there is a possibility to invite email contacts to like your fan page. And that works right here under Build Audience, Invite Email Contacts. And then from here, you have a lot of different choices of how you're going to um, do this. It says maximum of 5,000 contacts supported. And to be honest, my experience has been when I've added more than a couple of hundred at a time this way, the Facebook tends to come back and give you a little wrist slap and says, um, you've done something that is not you know, okay, or you're using the system too fast or something. So don't be frustrated by this. And I do recommend trying it. So, you know, even Constant Contact is here. So if you click on one of these Invite Contacts, it'll teach you how to do um, the export from Constant Contact and how to upload the contacts back into uh, Facebook. So I'm going to use the um, Upload Contact List file. This is just sort of a generic, you know, all address book type um, uh, format to to do this process. I'm going to click on choose file and then let's say I go out and look for email addresses and I'll go ahead and click OK and it says you can't use this type of file. It's basically looking for a .csv file so whatever if you're using an Excel spreadsheet file um, you'll want to um, do do that convert it into a .csv file. A .csv file means a comma separated value file and it's just one of the formats in um, in Excel. And you can also use a text file. You could do this one at a time if you wanted to. I can cannot imagine that would probably drive me crazy. But um, anyway, there's lots of different ways to do this. So we're coming down to the mark here. Let me just see if there's anything that I can answer right off the bat. Uh, somebody's asking why I use Chrome versus Safari. I just happen to be using Chrome today. Um, I don't have a preference. I want my last question answered. Okay, Emily, let's see. You will get it answered. Everybody whose questions got asked today, I promise that I will do my best to um, come in. And uh, let's see what, yeah, I cannot unfortunately see all the questions easily right now. There are quite a bunch of them. But I will get back to you um, in a very timely manner with, with answers to all your questions as best as I can. Um, I wanted to take a moment uh, just to reiterate that, uh, actually, you know what, why not show you me for a moment? Albert. Yeah. So it's been great um, spending time with you today. I want to encourage everybody to take what you've learned. I want to encourage you to take what you've learned today and to put it into practice as soon as possible because as we all know, when we learn something, if we don't use it, we lose it. So um, do take some time today to try out anything that we've talked about. If you get a chance to sign up for a trial of Constant Contact, you know, take it through its paces, try out some of the um, features that I talked about, see what you can learn on your own. Um, the sooner that you can um, take advantage of some of the things we talked about, the better for you. Um, if you come back to it in a week or a month, you know, you'll probably be at somewhat of the starting gate. So the sooner you can uh, put what we've learned into practice, the better it will be for you. Um, like I said, I uh, am a trainer in Portland. I work with uh, Constant Contact and I also work with social media and really try to help small businesses get the most out of their time and energy and effort with these tools. Um, we're in a time right now where we have a huge um, new advantage over larger companies. Um, we have both word of mouth, we have social media, which is a word of mouth tool. Um, we have email marketing and um, time has really never been better to use these tools to reach out to uh, whoever we want to and um, spread, you know, whether it's good information or information about our businesses and, and what we're about. Um, the time has really ne never been better to um, do marketing very inexpensively and very effectively. So I hope you'll keep in touch with me. Uh, I wanted to show you one more slide. 
Let's see if we can get that going. And um, like I said, I will send out um, information to everyone um, from today's webinar um, about the answers to questions and hopefully also the recording from today's uh, webinar. And uh, let's see if I have any last words. Um, please do take advantage of the um, website match. Uh, that is a great offer. And do keep in touch. You know, like I said earlier in the webinar, we teach uh, classes in the area um, on a pretty regular basis, uh, a number of different locations. And um, being at an in-person um, event, um, constant contact event is fantastic. I've just been having a lot of fun both delivering them and meeting folks who are coming out for them. So I hope that uh, we will get a chance to hang out together in person soon. And uh, yeah, let's see, any last thoughts I have? Okay, a lot of folks are asking questions here, so that's great. Feel free to go ahead and ask your questions. And let's see, I've got a few minutes left, so to really fill out the uh, time, let me see if there's one more tip or trick I can bring into the four. So I will say one last thing that, uh, that I think is important about Facebook. Um, actually, I think this is the most important tip or trick of all. And that is um, having a list of close friends. So right here, I have something called a list of close friends. It's something I built myself. And basically to build a list, you come down here to the friends area, you click on more, the word more, and you click on create a list. Now, as you can see right here, there is a little list that Facebook makes for you that it calls close friends, but it designs the list for you. And it can be a fantastic thing or not. And really what you wanna do is create your own list. So my list could be business connections. And now I'm gonna add people to that. So I'm gonna add my friend Spencer. And now I'll create this list. And now anytime Spencer uh, adds something to Facebook, um, you will see that. Um, so let's add someone else here. Um, my, I'll just add a typical Michael. Do we have a Michael? Um, so I will add my friend Michelle and I will add my friend Marcia. And you can also add um, fan pages here. So now when I look at this list again and I look at the stream of it, you can see that you know things from the people who I have on this list and the fan pages that I have on this list are suddenly showing up. So um, this is a great way to look at Facebook. So for instance, if I look at my typical news feed, now I've got 2,600 friends. So this little news, uh, this little uh, stream just cruises through here. Um, it, it, it is very much a stream. But if I look at my list of close friends list, I can see my friends um, and just what they're posting, everything that they're posting. So nothing is hidden. If I want to look at a particular uh, fan page in here, then I would see everything that that fan page posted. As far as I know, it's really the only way to look at Facebook so that you are seeing what you want to see. You know, it's a way to customize what it is that you're looking for. So I think that uh, is about wrapping it up. Um, again, I want to thank you for spending these last hour and a half with me. It's been a pleasure. Um, I generally laugh a lot more when I'm presenting, and uh, it's, it's since I've pretty much uh, just been with you. Um, it hasn't had that same kind of feel as when I get up in front of a group, but um, I hope it's been great for you. I would love to hear your feedback. I will email you shortly with a link to the webinar in case you want to review anything we went over. And if you have any corrections of anything I said, I would love to hear that. I will include that in the email out to you um, with uh, a link to the webinar. I'll probably include a link to um, a document that's fantastic about ways to build your list. Um, and if you want to keep in touch, if you'd like to work together, go ahead and respond to the email and let's talk. I One of my favorite things is to get together with people um, either via Skype or Google Hangouts or in person and help you 
think through and you know activate on uh, some of your marketing um, ideas. So uh, thank you again for participating today and I look forward to being in touch and I hope you have a great rest of your January and a great 2014. And thank you again for being here.